Okay, welcome back, Richard. Welcome back, Mickey. This is so unintuitive, this thing. It really is. So unintuitive. Um, guys wouldn't mind... Um, awfully if you could um share this around just share the links around uh, the link to it around um it would be most appreciated just to bump the numbers up a little bit because for some bizarre reason oh hang on here we go I really need to sort all of this stuff out, is what I need to do. Right, we will. Uh, we'll get there. There we go. Have I been using it as a key tie yet? Yeah. Um, only in the privacy of my own home. there's nobody else around I put on my Howard, favourite Howard Jones jumper and uh, and then yeah I'm bouncing around my office okie dokie let's do this do that <clears throat> okay right we seem to be getting a few numbers here so I think it's about time um, we made a start uh, Mr. Cassidy oh I need to call you Mr. Cassidy well I'll call you plenty of things but uh, right okay <clears throat> welcome um, to this overview, this initial overview, there'll be more of these, I guess, as we um, we go about, um, to the Behringer MS-101. Here it is, in all its glory. Um, thanks, big thanks to the guys at Music Tribe for sorting all of this out for me. Um, they're brilliant. I love them. Thank you very much. Um, this is rough because this is the first time I've used this kind of setup. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to do a, a decent live video. Um, so here we go, um, we're, we're here. Um, please ask your questions in the comments section and um, I will do my best to answer them. Uh, bear in mind that there is a slight lag between uh, what you're seeing and what I'm doing, um, so I will do my best. All I really want to do uh, at the moment, um, because I've only got about 50 odd minutes to do this, uh, is to go through and just kind of give you a, a brief demonstra demonstration even of um, the functionality of this thing, how it compares um, uh, physically to a, a 101. We'll do hopefully be doing a sonic comparison uh, at some point fairly soon. And that's with a genuine uh, Roland SH-101 um, if uh, we can make the arrangements in time. So, right, let's get on with this thing because uh, there's a trend. Have we seen this trend with videos? Such and such a demo, no talking. <laughs> that doesn't apply here, I'm afraid. Right, so as you can see, um, this is the Behringer MS-101. It is their take on the Roland SH-101, as I'm sure you are very well aware. And to that end, they have replicated this thing to within an inch of its life. And I don't believe there's anything missing. I do believe there is, um, well, I, I know that there are some additions. So very quickly, let's just go through the, the synth as, as it stands. Uh, if we just go across the, the top plane here, so if you look at this and compare it to um, 
uh, an original 101 you'll notice that um you know this this whole arpeggiator and sequencer section is is new and different as is the tempo and gate uh length knob there and this fm source and fm uh, amount setting these are, are all new but we'll come to those in a bit but pretty much across the top here this is identical so we have our tuning knob um left for flat right for sharp um we have our lfo here um we have a clock rate here and there are three settings for that so you can have low medium and high so you can go really really fast not so fast and a little slower um then you have your uh lfo waveform so we have uh sawtooth uh square uh, random and noise so we can modulate um with any of those four settings there onto the vco again it's um identical settings here so we have uh, the four ranges 16 8 4 and 2 feet um and then the amount of modulation you want to apply to the vco is there the pulse width uh, settings are here as well and you can then uh, determine how you want to modulate the pulse width whether you want to do it with the lfo whether you want to do it manually or with the envelope so that's uh, as it was with the original now we come to the source mixer and the source mixer gives us um some extras or an extra should we say well, actually no it does it gives us two extras so we have the square wave which is also a uh, pulse wave uh, sorry pulse width modulation uh setting we have uh, a ramp um sawtooth and we have a triangle as well now the triangle that's an addition to the original we have the sub oscillator which can be um, one octave down two octaves down or two octaves down with a narrower uh, bandwidth i think um duty cycle or something i can't remember the exact term um, and then we have the noise generator so we can add in noise and then this is new uh, the external audio input now um i haven't really explored this too much because um i'm just not that familiar with using external audio but it it, it does seem that it processes the external audio through um the filter um and so yeah that should be interesting i need to figure out how best to use that i need to consult with some more learned people um so moving on to the vcf uh the filter here so we have frequency uh, cutoff and uh, resonance uh, then we have the envelope um, adjustment we have the modulation and we have the keyboard uh, tracking so that's that's all there um, and that's pretty much as it was on the original the VCA has this unique and this again this was on the original and on here um, the the voltage control amplifier can um, affect the uh, envelope or the gate um, so it can use the envelope or the gate and that provides you with some extra effects then we have the envelope itself so a standard adsr and we have the gate and trigger gate and lfo that uh, can can modulate uh, that so that's all pretty much as, as as it is on the original um on the back which i can't really show you with this current setup otherwise i'll knock everything over um, but we have usb which is just here then we have midi in out and through we have over the right hand side we have output we have headphones we have external audio in we have a hold switch connection there as well the mains uh, power that is there um, we have cv in uh, cv in and out and uh, we also have this feature where the velocity can be output and then input back in so that the velocity affects um the envelope and the filter as well so I don't have the correct cable for that at the moment. It's just like a three and a half mono, you know, just that standard patch lead, but I don't have any um, because I don't have any modular synths. Okay, judge me. Um, but we will come to that at some point. So, what extra things do we have before we get down to the um, the modulation stuff, uh, the performance area, really? Uh, so we have this expanded um, arpeggiator and sequencer and we have eight different locations and i think we can have 32 steps per location so it's hugely expanded over the original and um i put in a pattern just now um and let me just uh, bring something up here and that's just going to be so if I want to go to the uh, the next 
uh, location. So let's sort this out. Let's stop there. Um, shift. No. I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Turn it off and on again. That always clears. Now that's the, the other thing you need to remember. This is like the original. There's no patch storage, and, and it doesn't store arpeggiations either. So if you want to record your own arpeggiation, you just hit the record button. You'll see step one lights up. Now you can either choose your steps and play the notes in, or you can just play the notes and it will automatically advance through the steps. You can also put in um, a hold as well, but I'm not going to you know, worry about that. I'm just going to go. So there's my eight steps and now I just take it out record. So it's very immediate, and I haven't really, again, that's another thing I haven't really dived, dived into. Um, but we've also got an arpeggiator as well. And so you've got up, down, up and down, random, and that's up two octaves down two octaves, uh, random two octaves, uh, what's that one, I don't know, um, the manual doesn't go into huge amounts of detail, but it's a wider range of arpeggiations than you have on the original, which is nice, uh, so um, we'll go into more detail in another video on that, but the other thing you've got here is you've got the, the tempo uh, adjustment now on the original that used to used to use the um, the clock rate the LFO clock rate to mess around with the speeds. Now you have your own separate uh, control. You'll also notice I don't know if you can see on the video um, that this is all also highlighted as swing. So let me see if I can let me play my. Uh, I'm going to take it out of ARP. So there's my arpeggiation. I'm going to put some swing into it. useful you might find that but it's there and it's an addition it's, it's a nice thing to have I guess um, so we've covered all of that let's have a look at the the kind of the performance section here so we have the main volume um, we have um, what is referred to as glide on here and the original is portamento and the um, the difference here is that the portamento and the original had an automatic and on and off with this it's called glide um, and it is just off or on so it's binary <laughs> you can go ridiculously high uh, so it's there for your pleasure uh, right underneath that you have transpose now as uh, my friend Mark Doty points it points out in his excellent SH 101 tutorial videos um, this is kind of with a short range keyboard and an oscillator that goes uh, from 16 foot to 2 foot, why would you want transpose? But I guess it's that kind of speed of, of just flicking a switch over. So um, let's just choose something uh, nice. just gentle on the ears um, so we start off at the 16 foot setting on the oscillator and that's uh, with the transpose very low so you have low medium and high so it's pretty low goes up to there then you can knock up the transpose and it knocks it up an octave same with high but of course you can do that here and you can go even higher because you go to the two foot setting 
But when you're on that two foot setting, you can then take it to there. And then you go into the realms of dog communication. So it has a fantastic range um, if, you know, combining the oscillator uh, and the transpose. Um, a lot of people use this for bass sounds. And so you, you'll probably find yourself working in these lower ranges, but uh, there's plenty of scope there. So let me just put it back there. Then finally on this section here, we have um, the bender. And um, the bender does pitch bend. And that's um, adjusted here with the, the VCO setting. So basically, let me just knock those down. So at zero, there's no effect. And at 10. Now, I would have personally liked this to have been in increments of 12, and then you could have done it via semitone and uh, I, what I tend to find myself doing I usually have my pitch bend set at plus two minus two either side so you kind of have to guess really so there you go that's about so just about there, it gives me my two semitones, but you can mess around with it. Um, and then you've also got uh, the filter can be adjusted. So you can uh, whack that up. And uh, let's... Come on. Uh, might help if I... subtle but it's there um but i say i tend to use it for let's take that down there we go right so there you go there's your performance section um right where should we start let's start with just the VCO um, and, and, and how it sounds. So we're going to drop the LFO right out and we are just going to go through and listen to each of these. Um, I'll just shorten that, bring that up. Right, so at the moment, nothing there. Oh, can I just show you this? Just like the original. We have self oscillating. Self oscillating filter, um, which is great. If you get it right, you can get some really great kind of uh, subby sounds. Right, so enough of that. Let's, let's get on with the, the, the proper stuff. Square wave. So let's put it up to 10. It's a nice square wave. But it also has pulse width modulation. Um, so we're going to set it at manual and uh, you'll be able to hear. So that's nice. Um, but of course, we can do that with the LFO and we get a nicer, more consistent effect. pulse width modulation which we can also use the envelope to mess around with so over here on the right hand side I can
so it's a really nice sounding uh, pulse width and very close to my ear anyway to the original uh, right let's get rid of that and let's go to the ramped sawtooth <laughs> And then we have the triangle wave. Which I really like. Especially if you go... It gets that nice kind of... Uh, bass sand. Of course you can, um, you can do more with that bass sand by adding in the sub oscillator. And we're going to start off with the, the one octave down, so as you'll hear the difference as we... Uh... And then we're going to do it with two octaves. So yeah, that's that's your um, your three options for your waveforms. So you have pulse width, um, you have ramp sawtooth, and you have triangle. Plus you have your sub oscillator to give you that extra bottom end should you require it. Of course, you can also um, let's just take the sub out. So let's bring in the sawtooth because you can now bring in uh, the noise oscillator as well. said about the external audio I will bring that in at a uh, in another video because I haven't fully worked out the best way to to employ that um, the filter so let's have a listen to the filter the filter is really nice on this and I think they've really kind of nailed that Roland filter so uh, this is just with um, the cut off wide open on the uh, triangle wave let's just bump it up nasty kind of gnarly resonance right at the top end there and you can really make this scream filter oscillation on here so you can if you're you know clever enough to to blend it all let's do the uh, the filter on the sawtooth width and we'll get the LFO to mess around with that a little bit
great effects. Once you start bringing all those other waveforms in, throw the sub oscillator in. I always find that the one octave down is a bit more pleasing to the ear. Uh, mess around with that filter. And you can start to get some really nice, big, you know, almost layered sounds. And of course you can modulate the filter with the LFO. So there's your filter. Now let's talk about the frequency modulation that we have here. There are six different types. Um, you've got your pulse width, you've got your sub oscillator one octave, sub oscillator uh, two octave and sub oscillator two octave with the uh, alternate duty cycle and then the noise. So you can choose any one of those to uh, mess around with the filter and then um, there's your amount setting. So here we go. So this is just using um, pulse width. So it kind of goes from kind of dirtying it up. There's a, there's a level there where it's kind of quite smooth. Kind of, kind of fuzzy to the point where it's that kind of sound that annoys teenagers. Let's try um, the ramp sawtooth. Probably best if we take that um, that LFO out. it works You get the idea. You can really, uh, should we say, fuck around with uh, with the sound there. Now, this apparently is a, a replication of uh, a modification that a lot of 101 users did in the 90s. Um, I forget the name of it. Now, was it Nova? It was a Nova mod or something like that. And they did this, and um, Behringer, in their infinite wisdom, said, hey, well, it's a popular modification. Let's just build it in the standard. So there it is. And as with everything on this synth, it's really because everything is, there's no presets. Uh, you have to build everything from scratch every time. Um, it's a great way of kind of learn, not only learning synthesis and remembering what does what and how, what, you know, which things affect other things. But you get this, um, you know, this kind of enjoyment from just happy accidents. What happens if I mess around with the envelope and the FM? I'm doing this in the same turn as the mono.
So there you go. The VCA with the uh, the envelope and the gate. So let me just tell, show you the difference with that. Let's turn that right off. Let's get us uh, back to something a bit more wholesome. So as you can hear, um, let's turn the glide off as well. So if I just open up the release on the envelope there. So at the moment, the voltage control amplifier is uh, following the instructions of the envelope. But I can also stick it into gate mode. So it literally is binary on and off. And the envelope has no real effect there. So what's that useful for, I hear you say? Um, when you want those kind of really punchy sounds, I guess. That just defeats this and, you know, yes, you can do it with the envelope, but I can do it with one switch. Um... Over here with the envelope, we have this setting with gate, gate and trigger. So that opens up the gate every time there's a trigger. The gate is open on that middle setting just when you uh, trigger. And then you have LFO. So there you go. There's the envelope. Um, and I think we've pretty much covered the basics there. So, um, oh, we haven't looked at the different waveform uh, for the LFO. So let's have the LFO on. So this is the LFO that is on the VCO. So you get this kind of uh, vibrato there. And then that's on the, the sawtooth. Let's go to the square. Much more pointed. Then we have random, which is... sample and hold and then of course the noise which gives a bit of a roughness um where the sample and hold really comes in to its own if we drop it out of the vco and we stick it in the filter Ooh, I misses. Sample and hold type. Um, bringing the LFO into the uh, the VCO and uh, the pulse width modulation and the filter we can start getting some interesting textures <laughs> um, if you are just wanting the say for example the LFO to do the the, the pulse width you can use the bender by pushing it forward 
uh, to give you that vibrato. <laughs> Um, one thing you haven't seen uh, let me just see if I can move that across my only problem is I've got a tripod set up and uh, I don't want to knock the uh, connections at the back too much um, so I need to wait for my video to catch up to see whether you have um, can see the mod grip so yeah it comes with the mod grip which was an optional extra believe it or not uh, with the original um, so there we go. The mod grip here is on on the left hand side, and it um, it comes. It's attached to a metal, quite a thick metal plate that screws on with two uh, grub screws underneath. Not grub screws, just normal um, screws. And there's another uh, attachment just here on the right uh, for the other strap peg. And uh, it feels very solid once it's on there. Um, obviously, you'd want to take care. Um, but it does two things, literally. Well, actually, it does three things. Um, um, Two are quite important. One is utterly important. So the first one is the bending. Now it only, as the original, it only bends up. So if you want to bend down, you have to move it up and do that. Now that's exactly how it was in the original. I guess somebody thought, ah, oh, you know, when you're only going to be bending notes. But it's not too hard to move from there to the to the regular bender there, which of course, as you can see, is illuminated. I forgot to point that out. Second option is the modulation. So just as pushing the mod wheel forward gives you that vibrato. There is a button. It's a binary button. It's literally on and off. And so you can use your thumb. Uh, if you wish, or whatever finger, or digit you feel that you can stretch to. Um, you use both in unison. And the third and most important and vital uh, function of the mod grip is it makes you look very fucking cool. And that's all there is to it. So I'm not going to give you a demonstration of it strapped on uh, right now, but I will do because I have been doing it a lot and it is rather fun. Um, but uh, it's a hefty beast, I must say. I think it's heavier than the original. I need to um, arrange my comparison test uh, to double check that, but it's quite a hefty thing. So you are supplied with what they call a um, live performance kit, which includes the strap, which is just a typical cheap webbed strap um and then that also includes the, the the modulation grip which plugs in at the rear with the same two pin connection as before somebody has asked whether this works on uh, an original and i will test that at some point and then you have this other peg here that bolts on um, and that's your live performance kit now i have some issues with this not that i play keyboards live um but I imagine that if anybody wants to do this, there are a couple of problems. The original SH-101 had the option for battery power. This doesn't have that. As we found out last week when, in my glorious unboxing video, we found that the power adapter was just an EU power adapter. And as you can tell, we have fixed that. Um, so the original had battery power. This doesn't. Nothing. There is no battery power. Forget it. So that then makes using this in a live situation just a little more tricky um, because you're going to have to have a power supply connected to your uh, your synth. Now, that's not always desirable. Even What makes it even less desirable is that the PSU that is supplied with this is just a pretty generic PSU with a very thin kind of cable. Now, you can see uh, as I bring that in there, it's just, you know, it's domestic. <laughs> you know, it's certainly not... Um, professional gig worthy stuff so if you were to use this live you would need to figure out how you're going to power it now do you power it through the mains which I would always think is a little bit dodgy um, or do you come up with a battery solution and nowadays thankfully we do have um, 
battery packs that are rechargeable that hold a, a large amount of, of voltage in there and that could potentially power this for two or three hours I would have thought easily um, they're not cheap but I guess if, if this is your stock in trade and you really want to use this live uh, I imagine you could buy one of those and attach it to the strap along with a wireless audio connection which again I would imagine is the best option um, so you'd have a couple of packs, one for power, one for wireless audio, and then you are pretty mobile. But we don't all have that. Um, and therefore, as far as um, uh, using this live on stage, if you're playing in a pub, you're not going to be moving more than a few feet in either direction. I guess it's not too much of an issue. If you maybe want to step out from behind your tower of synths just to the side with this thing strapped over your shoulder to show the girls and impress them, then I guess having it attached with a regular mains adapter and plugged into an audio cable is not going to be too much of a problem. But if you are up front and you want to move from left to right on the stage, backwards and forwards, and have that kind of legendary key time mo uh, movability or motion, um, you're going to need to think about it uh, and think about how you're going to power this uh, and so on and so forth. So that's, my, that's one of the very few drawbacks because for me, the SH-101 and, and subsequently the MS-101 was always about being a, a lovely little analog monosynth, but it was this, this the whole kind of ability of just slinging it on your neck and uh, away you go. Um, pretty good. But um, that kind of put the damper on it. But it's a tiny damper, really, really tiny. I'm not going to hold it against uh, the machine at all. So initial impressions, I've been playing with this now since last week, um, and uh, I love it. It's great. I, it, I'm anyone that knows me knows that I'm all about you know presets and um, you know big software synthesizers or big hardware synthesizers that I can just press a couple of buttons, call up my sounds, and away I go. This just you know don't don't worry about it because it's all completely um wiped as soon as you turn it off you have to start again or you're left with the settings from the last time um so that forces you to think a bit more and think a bit out of the box um so there you go it's uh, i i really like it um it sounds great it's fun um and it's educational as well i think there are going to be a lot of young people that think uh, that are going to get into synthesis where's a good place to start well for 299 this is an excellent place to start um, because it's cheap and it's cheerful and it's fun and it's easy to learn. It has that kind of what I call mini moog esque layout, you know, that kind of left to right thing. So you start here and you move along and you get your sound, you craft it and you shape it and then there you, away you go. So let's um, go to the comments and um, flick through and see if we've got any questions in here. Uh, first of all, Mr. Cassidy could you have found a more adult one yes it's only a baby one thank you very much smart ass um d -d 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 domino commander says wow it bends uh yeah um does the live kit include a roadie and a gram of coke uh, unfortunately not um richard Hyder asks has it not got usb yes it does it has usb as you can see on the back here but usb is midi only um so it's just MIDI in and out. It's it just it's class compliant. So literally plug it in. It appears in your Windows or your Mac uh, environment, and it can be used as a controller, um, and it can be used to send and receive data between your digital audio workstation. So should you so wish, but it doesn't carry power over USB. And again, that's probably because USB only carries five volts. The main supply of this is nine. So I, I guess that was out of the question. Um, Jan Jiskra, I hope I pronounced that right, or Jan Jiskra. Uh, I'm really sorry, but my SH-101 sounds different, in brackets, much better. Um, that's entirely a matter for opinion. Um, I would say that uh, this is being broadcast over Facebook Live. It's being compressed to hell. So therefore, you, if, you, if you're going to make a judgment on how something sounds based purely on one of these videos, um, then yeah, that's your prerogative. But uh, I would say go out and try one before you make a judgment based on, on this video. Plus, you know, the demonstrator here is a pretty shit keyboard player. So I'm not going to be selling it that well. Um, but when these come out in about four or five weeks time, um, 
I seriously encourage you to go out and try one. However, if you have a genuine SH101 and it's in full working order and it gives you all the connectivity options you want, then why would you want one of these? Uh, I know that I'd stick with my SH101, but this brings the, the whole concept into uh, that, uh, that modern kind of environment where we've got full uh, MIDI connectivity. Um, I haven't tested all the MIDI uh, compatibility, so it says in the instructions um, that it is it has a comprehensive MIDI implementation. You go to the manual to look for that MIDI implementation, it refers you to a document uh, that um, uh, exists on the website, but the website isn't uh, fully up to date at this moment in time so therefore um, I can't examine that MIDI implementation but I do intend to spend a bit more time uh, with this hooked up and just analyzing what transmits and receives uh, the MIDI. Now I'm imagining it's not going to be as comprehensive as the mic uh, so the IK Multimedia Uno which um, is another synth that I really really love and that has full massive MIDI capabilities. Um, so I don't think it's going to be like that, but we will see. Uh, we'll explore. This is um, uh, kind of early baby steps. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Other questions. Can you play a little bit again? Yes, Manuel, I will do that in shortly, but I do need to wrap this up very quickly. Uh, Richard says, Base Station 2 does USB power. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so clearly it's uh, pulling a, a lower voltage. Um, or it steps it up internally. I don't know. I'm, I'm not massively uh, knowledgeable about PSUs. Um, Matthew Deakin, will you be looking at the other synths released by Behringer? I do blooming well hope so. Um, so this is the first, I think this is one of the first MS 101s um, in Europe, I, I believe. I know that um, some guys in the US have had uh, prototypes. I know that um, Ken. Flux with it, Pierce has had a prototype for a little while, um, but I think this is if this isn't one of the first in Europe, this is one of the first in um, in the UK, and I've I've got it hopefully for a, a few more weeks. Um, I've already got my pre-order in because I'm having one of these. I'm going to have mine in black, I think. Um, but yes, I hope that they're going to continue sending me stuff as and when they get it. Obviously, there's a huge demand. So um, I'm hoping to get the RD-808 because I really want to hear that and play with that because I do love a drum machine being a drummer. Um, and if they want to send me an Odyssey, that won't uh, won't get turned down. And of course, there's the Crave and there's the VC340 and there's an RD-909 that's coming up. There's the Pro-1. I mean, they just literally nailed NAM without even being at NAM this year with all their new releases. I was just incredibly impressed. Um, Mickey says, I want one in blue. Uh, apparently, that makes it sound more analog-y. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, Richard says the base station stepped it up from that, which is interesting, so that's good. Um, Matthew says, Crave does look very cool. It does, doesn't it? I was... Um, uh, completely taken by surprise i knew they were going to announce something you know because they they said uh, oh you know there's one more thing on sunday and i thought oh i wonder if this will be you know what will it be um will it be something we haven't heard of or something we have heard of and they've just um uh just kept it under wraps and I, i'll tell you this for nothing the guys in the uk that work you know the behringer division in the uk had no idea that that was coming um, so that's how quiet and how, how secret it was. Um, and what a surprise. Uh, and, and that stupidly, ridiculously cheap price point for, was it 199 for a semi-modular synth? Um, it's pretty damn cool. So uh, let's do some more noodling uh, for, I think it was Manuel who was asked for a play a little bit more. So let's just, um, I'll shut up now and um, knock out some some awful notes. And we'll go through the oscillators. Um, let's go through the, the uh, let's go through the uh, the waveforms uh, one by one. Um, just bringing that back in there. So let's start off, and we we'll go from left to right. <laughs>
just to show you. Uh, I've got some more questions. Oh, blimey, there's loads more questions coming in here. Um, so uh, just want to show you again, in case you missed it earlier, um, we do have the self-oscillating uh, filter. So let's get that. There we go. There we go. So that is a pure... This is just the filter. Which I think is rather cool. Right, let's um, go through. Uh, very quickly answer some more questions because I have got to go. So, um, da ba 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 uh, how big is it says Matthew Shuttleworth um, it's about the same width as the, the 101 so uh, I haven't got a tape measure what's that <laughs> how big is that um, so probably looking at just under what a foot and a half wide I don't know what that is in mil it's a little it's not so deep because it doesn't have that extra bit at the back um, with the vertical inputs they're all on the back plane so it's a little shallower um, it's about as tall and it's about as wide as the original if that helps uh, will it come in grey, says Dan de Castino. Um, no, apparently it's only coming in three colours, red, blue and black. The black will be the same colour, I believe, as the grip here, as you can see on the left. Um, Behringer just needs to stop making these tune candies. <laughs> My wallet hurts, I hear you. Uh, here, Drew. Is the out-trigger tweaker knob a sign? Was the out-trigger tweaker knob a sign? Well, what's the out-trigger tweaker knob? Did I miss something? Have I? Not quite sure. If you can explain, maybe. Um, blah, 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 blah. This is doing my tinnitus the world of good. Well done, Mark. Hopefully it's loosening the, um, the earwax. My wife is asking if I come down to watch Silent Witness. Yes, I'll be down there in just a moment. Um, uh, what else have we got here? It's just my wife banging on. Um, right, here we go. Drew, uh, this thing makes a lot of good sounds, but so far I'm not impressed when the noise source gets involved yeah do you know what i kind of agree um it, it has to be used uh, let's just stop that doing that so it has to be used with some It's a little, I don't know, it's just, I think it's maybe, uh, just needs to be used just ever so slightly. Um, I'd love to hear some ARP basses, but okay, gold. Right, let's um, do that.
bass for you there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Is there an intermission? Don't worry, it's uh, coming to an end very soon. Uh, some Depeche Mode tunes would be nice. Yeah, if I could play Depeche Mode tunes, maybe next time I'll hook it up to the sequencer. I've got some some stuff that I could use. Um, all right, so Drew saying the left arm at rigor. Okay, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> uh, so what was your original question now? If, uh, where are we? Um, oh, is the, the tweaker knob, I guess. So let me get this. Is, is this assignable? Um, uh, hopefully that's uh, so Drew says uh, is this mod grip assignable so the mod grip does what the bender does here so the bender um, let me just bring up something that's a little less bassy turn the arpeggiator off right so the bender um, you can mess around with, you know, you can use it for the VCO and the VCF. And if you do on the wheel, on the grip, it is just the VCO. It's not the filter. No, I tell a lie, it is the filter. So the bend on the mod grip seems to do exactly what the bender does here. So it's just an exact replication of the left and right movement, except um, the wheel on the grip only goes up. You can't, so you, here's your root note. Only bend up from it. You can't bend down from the root note. That's, and that's how it was in the original. Uh, the same with the, uh, the mod button on the end. It's exactly the same. So, yes, the, the mod wheel on the grip and the, um, the, the bender wheel on the grip and the mod button do exactly the same as what the bender here and the mod switch do on the actual synth itself, except the only difference is the wheel on the grip only goes up from the root note. Let's go down from the root note like that. Okay. Um, we got there, I think. Uh, but it says, thanks, you're welcome. Um, uh, knob assignable. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Thanks. Good, thanks for solving that. That's good. Great. Oh, well, we like to, to inform. Um, so I think the only things we haven't really gone into are the sequencer, and that will come later. The same with the external audio input. That will come later once I've really kind of figured out the best way of, of using it and demonstrating it. But there you go, MS-101 in the flesh. Hope you enjoyed the sounds. Um, please visit the blog, www.failedmuso.com forward slash blog. Um, the first introductory post about the MS-101 is up already and there'll be more to come and watch this space for hopefully a very exclusive AB comparison between this red MS-101 and an original red SH-101, one of only a handful that have had a Kenton um, uh, modification made to it and we're going to set them up hopefully side by side and see how they compare um, both in terms of using them and how they sound. So uh, like the Facebook page, which is where you are at the moment. Um, bookmark the blog. Follow me on Instagram. It's Instagram forward slash failed muso. Uh, it's twitter.com forward slash fail, failed muso. Facebook.com forward slash failed muso. And the website, once again, www.failedmuso.com forward slash blog. Um, follow me, share this, um, tell your friends, there'll be more to come on this. Um, thanks for watching and good night.